I'm driving around Newark and I'm seeing empty lot after empty lot after empty lot and a bell went off in my head and, and said, why don't we do this? Why don't we string together a lot of these empty lots and have a farm right here in the middle of the city? We're trying to create a new paradigm in farming in the city. It's a victory for Newark on many different levels. So one is you can see there's children here and they're learning so it's a wonderful educational opportunity for our kids to learn essential elements of agriculture. What the students are getting out of is that, you know, they go in the grocery store and they pick up vegetables and they go to the counter and they buy them. They're now learning where they come from, how long it takes to grow them, what it takes to grow them. So they're learning to value earth, value money, and value hard work. We could grow all these incredible vegetables and help solve the problem that, that, that's here. I mean, Newark is essentially a food desert. There's not like a whole food store that have natural and organic and that food and vegetables, you have to go out of the city to get yeah, that. A lot of the land here in Newark is contaminated. So by growing above the ground, uh, it eliminates the costly and time-consuming process of soil remediation. If you have a farm, you might as well have a couple of cows to go with it. One is Betsy and the other one is Daisy. A lot of the farms are, you know, hours away. Um, and when being so close to the city and actually in Newark allows him to have um, his servers and the cooks come down and actually volunteer here and you know get their hands dirty and, and pick the vegetables and, and really own a piece of the, the farm. We're in a, obviously a very, very poor city and the demand is very high here. One of the great things about being down here was neighbors coming in last year asking what are you going to grow, what are you doing, when it's going to be available. It reminds me of when I was young, man, the way it used to be, you know what I mean? People loving people, you know? I'm John Taylor, CEO and co-founder of Brick City Urban Farms. And today is Take Your Kids to Work Day. And so just behind me, I've got uh, Alex and Omar uh, here planting uh, peppermint. Brick City Urban Farms started because there was a um, there was a desire within me and some other friends to do something in this incredible city. Uh, the new mayor had been elected and there's all this great energy. And it's finding, okay, what is that thing that we want to do? I'm sitting around the holiday uh, table and I'm elbowing my kids under the table to get involved in the conversation. Uh, their uncle is sitting there across from them. And their uncle is this goofy guy, but he also happens to be mayor of the city of Newark. Okay, that's even better, a better identification. I'm Corey Booker and I'm Omar and Alexis, or AG as I call her, uncle. So I said, ask him some questions. And Omar pipes in with this great question about, um, about food banks. There are people that don't have homes and they might need food. You know, what's the situation with food banks in the city of Newark? You know, are there enough of them? Do they have enough food? And I just kind of took a double take and I was like, wow, that's a great question. And then my daughter, Alexa, she asked, what about fresh food in the city? She had uh, been, spent a lot of time in Trenton and saw the situation there and knew that that was, that was uh, an issue. Basically the only food that they have are, is at the corner stores and they have junk food and horrible artificial colors. And blah, blah, blah. If we could bring fresh food to the kids of Newark, um, they'll be more attentive in school and it could, it's very beneficial. So we kind of got um, really committed to this idea and um, decided you know, to, to call a number of people. One of those people was Lorraine Gibbons because Lorraine has done edible gardens for schools uh, throughout the area and it's done an incredible uh, job with those. One morning I was thinking about it, thinking about the different gardens in different areas and, and other, uh, other uh, urban farms and I thought I'd like to start one in Newark and John called me four hours later. I thought that I lost the call because I hear nothing on the other end. And Lorraine says, you're not gonna believe this, John, but not but a few hours ago, I was telling one of my friends that I wanted to do just that. You can call it serendipity, you can call it grace, you can call it uh, just a strange coincidence. She had like goosebumps and I had one of those moments and I'm like, well, let's do it, let's do it. Uh, we ended up calling the Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District, which is where we are today because they had various empty lots that they were going to put into production, but at this time we're not. And um, when we told them about what we're doing, they were very excited. But they said, well, what about, what about the land? It's not the best land to use to grow things. And I said, we've got a technique for that. We use earth boxes. 
business, I believe, will be economically viable. It is sustainable, not just because we're planting and that, you right. know, you think of the original, the waste is what we think about, sustainable and cool. And yes, sexy, yeah, right? yeah. But this is a business. Yes, Alfred. and that's what it should be. I mean, and that's in many ways, it's a great way to get affordable, uh, healthy vegetables, organic. And organic, this because of these boxes, you can be instantly organic. Lorraine had heard about uh, spin farming, which is small plot intensive farming. And we found that to be the ideal model for us to follow um, because it talks about um, how to do commercial farming on small spaces, you know, in urban uh, settings and suburban settings. Farming is actually a dynamic and adaptive use. So by spin farming in earth boxes, uh, these farms can be moved as development patterns change. So you can think of it as spin mobile. Uh, and in addition to uh, vacant lots, you've also got vacant warehouses in Newark. So John and Lorraine are taking earth boxes and putting them on the roof of a warehouse. Uh, and you can think of that as spin vertical. So we, we ordered 500 earth boxes. Um, the truck comes and the guy says, where's your forklift? What are we going to do to get these earth boxes off the truck? And I said, call Billy, naturally. They asked me if I had a forklift I could bring to the job, to the farm. And I said, maybe it would be easier if the tractor trailer came to our warehouse, we offloaded it and brought it to you on straight trucks with lift gates. About a month later, he comes back, he sees all the boxes planted, and he sees the plants coming up like crazy. His eyes pop out of his head, and he says, my God, you know, I've got this space on top of my roof. Uh, you know, 8,000 square foot that's up there. You guys can totally plant up you know, my roof as well if you need extra space. Well, last year we had 60. This year we're gonna have 250. Well, we've always called it North Beach Island because of the wonderful views of Manhattan and downtown Newark, uh, the trains going by. It's just a uh, great place to live, work, and to grow a garden. I figured you couldn't have a farm without cows. So I bought them from a friend of mine who's a local vendor here in town also, Toro Restaurant Equipment. Uh, Betsy and Daisy, 